well, good morning. Uh, good morning from beautiful Black Forest. It is uh, already 10 a.m. Sun is shining. Today we are going to attempt uh, one of the classic hikes here, the highest mountain of the Black Forest, the Feldberg. It's 1,493 meters high. Uh, it's a loop hike, approximately 12 kilometers, 500 something meters of altitude gain up and down, so it's not that much. It should be an easy hike, easy relaxed hike. Four to five hours, I would say. If you go with breaks, maybe six hours. I have the whole day. Weather forecast looks very good. As you can tell, uh, the beginning of the hike is uh, it's like a little ski resort. <laughs> There's actually already the, the summit up there, but behind it, the Feldberg is, has kind of a flat summit. We're already at oh, almost 1,300 meters, so it's like just, just 200 meters up in that direction. And then you have, uh, in winter, this is a popular skiing destination. You have this uh, the cable car and ski lifts, and over there, in that direction, well, here's a ski school. You can rent skis, there's a cafe. Hotels. Uh, I'm also staying in a little place over there. Stayed there overnight, had a nice breakfast. And yeah. Uh, the loop hike will go that direction. We will come along the little lake. Uh, it will go down a little bit. So obviously, 200 meters up to the mountain would not explain why we have 500 meters of altitude gain today. So we will go down a little bit over there and then climb up again on the other side. Yeah, so the hike starts in that direction, makes a loop, goes up there to the summit and then we kind of come down over there again. Now let's see. <laughs> okay, enough talking, let's go. So I'm walking down to the lake now. It's going down, 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 going to the Feldsee. And from there, we will go up again to the mountain. Yeah, it's all very green here. It has rained a lot the last weeks. So everything is green, everything is flourishing. Nice forest, nice plants here. Green shirt, I fit in. <laughs> Well, Black Forest. If you don't know Black Forest, it's a very big area, national park in the southwest of Germany. Very big. So, in the northern part, middle part, southern part. I'm in the southern part now, where you have the highest mountains. Like I said, the highest elevation here is 1,493 meters. That's yeah, like highest mountain of Scotland, <laughs> Ben Nevis. Yeah. Landscape here is uh, it's not rocky, the mountains are not rocky. They are green, a lot of forest here. Uh, you hardly ever get across the tree line. Well, today we will get across the tree line, but it's not like in the Alps. Yeah? It's, very natural here. A lot of forest, forest, forest. That's why it's called Black Forest, right? <laughs> you have many hikes here going down into gorges. Yeah, bridges here, railway bridges looking spectacular. Green hills, valleys, uh, nice architecture. It's a beautiful part of Germany. Can highly recommend if you haven't been here yet. 
people are friendly. It's not Bavaria, yeah, it's a different state, but in Württemberg. So people don't speak Bavarian, but they have their own dialect here. But you can understand it. So they say things like Tschüssle <laughs> instead of Tschüss. So it's a, uh, in a way to, to, to say goodbye. Tschüssle. Grüßle. I think they like to have this le at the end. Gives the gives the dialect and the words a very cute, uh, cute sound, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, at the bottom now with signposts, many signs, many directions. But basically, you have the choice here: go that direction, go follow directly the path uh, to go up the mountain, or you make a little detour this direction around the lake and that path then meets the path up to the mountain later so of course there's have enough time go down to the lake first here we are at the lake Awesome. <laughs> Took me around uh, 40 minutes, but as you know, I'm filming and talking to pick up my tripod again. So I'm sure you can make it in half an hour or less. The lake is a natural reserve, so it's protected. You're not allowed to swim in it or to get too close to the shore. Everything's very natural and wild. So no swimming, no water skiing, no boats, anything like that. But you're welcome to come and have picnics. There are many benches here. So makes it very quiet, yeah? the, the chef the lake where people go swimming and have their yeah, have beaches or things like that. It's a diff different atmosphere than a place like this where it's more nature. So at the end of the hike we will <clears throat> be up there somewhere and then from there you have a good view down to the lake. Yes, you will see. <laughs> Here we meet the path again. The original path around the mountain or up to the mountain and now let's go. So some facts about the lake it was written there on the sign. Uh, from above it looks like an eye, a dark eye. <laughs> it's 34 meters deep, it was formed by glacier activities. It's very cold water, there's a lot of oxygen in it and now not much nutrition for some reason. So there are fishes in there and some other uh, animals, <laughs> uh, but they have to be specialists yeah, to, to survive in this kind of water. It's interesting to read. Yeah. We're learning something here. Finally, we are going up 
first time today going uphill. 1,120 meters. Yeah. Still good weather. Ooh, sun comes out. special about the forest in this area is that uh, it's a special name, I forgot it, there's signs somewhere, I will put the name down there I think you could would say it's kind of a jungle they leave it as it is so there's fern growing all over the place they just leave it as natural as possible I believe you just clear the path for the tourists but other than that Nature can do what it wants here. It is really, really beautiful. Wow. <laughs> oh. Very nice path here along the stream through this natural forest. Everything super green. Sun is shining through the big trees. Ah, it's a 
It's beautiful and mysterious at the same time. It's so natural. Wow, look at that. Any moment I expect like a fairy tale figure jumping out of the forest like a unicorn or Peter Pan <laughs> Robin Hood. Ah, it's not from a fairy tale, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Actually having Robin Hood jumping in front of me here on the path would probably mean that he wants my money. <laughs> So Okay, came out of the foresty path, signpost, and we're back on a asphalt road, which I believe is the the service road that goes up to to a hut. I can see a little roof there. So let's see. Oh, decided to move on to the next hut. It was a bit busy over there. I think the next hut is already in one kilometer. There, I think there are three or four huts in this loop. Yeah, so many options. Okay, going downhill again. Became a bit more busy now. It's lunch time and but the majority of people walk in the other direction, yes? It seems to me, because I meet all the people coming towards me. Because that direction, uh, counterclockwise, is how it's described in the books, on the websites. Yeah, that's what most of the people do. But then you reach the summit first, and then you go to the lake in the end. I think the summit should be at the end of a hike. Yeah, it's a, yeah, the success, we made it. That's why I do it in this direction. Okay, approaching the next hut. You see the roof already over there. Ah, let's see if we can sit down there and have a little snack and a little drink. Mm -hmm.
was nice, refreshing. We had a lens stew, I think, with the sausage. Looked a bit strange, <laughs> maybe on the footage, but it was actually really nice. Yeah, now I feel energized again for the last bit. I think from now on it's going up, up, up. Yeah, let's see. This is the first actually hike I do since the West Highland Way. It's 13th of July now. Finished the West Highland Way mid-May, so two months. Yeah, didn't do any hiking two months. Of course, I did sports like running, cycling, went to the gym. But hiking, the weather was really not nice here in southern Germany the last two months. A lot of rain, floods, thunderstorms, very unstable weather, not good conditions to go into the mountains. The good thing is I feel okay, I'm I'm puffing a bit now, but it's because I'm going uphill fast. Yeah. Backpack weights nothing. There's just nothing in there, I just don't have a smaller backpack. But at least legs feel good. I feel like I haven't really lost much of my of my power, which I had right after the West Island Way. You know, walking for nine days with 16, 17 kilos. Of course, I felt very fit after that. It's good to know because yeah, I wanted to do this hike, just one hike before I leave to uh, two weeks hike next weekend to Norway actually yeah you can already look forward to the videos <laughs> of course we'll, there will be camping again big backpack so different thing than here but at least now it feels good to hike just one weekend tomorrow I will do another hike here in the Black Forest hike one weekend see how the body reacts it reacts good everything fine so I'm in a good mood and I look forward to the two weeks in Norway So just as an insight for you about this chron chronological <laughs> order of the videos because you know when you watch the video you don't know when I did the tour and sometimes it takes months for me to find time to edit and upload so right now I still haven't uploaded the last West Silent Way video day 9 it's still it's, it's like 95% finished I hope I finish it next week because, like I said, in one week I'm already leaving for the next hike in Norway and by then I really want to have the West Highland Way videos, the series wrapped up, finished. Yeah. If you have watched some of my videos you might wonder now where is his hiking partner where is she we want to see her <laughs> well she's still there yeah so she hasn't disappeared but she's injured yeah she has an injury 
you cannot hike at the moment and that's why she sends me out here alone camping and hiking I hope or we hope that she is back maybe somewhere September latest October so I'm sure you will see her again at the moment she really has to rest no hiking no running nothing yeah. so fun fact I'm walking back now to where I just came from see there yeah. Doo -doo -doo. it's not that I'm wrong here this is the path to the summit with sign posted and everything and I just realized when checking my my map that this is not the path I wanted to use yeah. there are several paths to this to the summit you can go very directly yeah, like like I said in the very beginning you just go up half an hour and then you're there but it's not the purpose of going out and go hiking yeah I want I have so much time after the whole day I want to do the scenic loop I want to do a bigger loop that's why I'm going back now and try to find the path that I actually wanted to use okay back at the confusing signpost it's funny I've done exactly this hike a couple of years ago in October well, October a couple of years ago and we did the same mistake there uh, because this sign is very confusing it points into one two three directions yeah it's like you can see there's one path there then there's one there and one is there and if you look carefully at the sign the Feldbergsteig like the the red sign points that direction and not that direction Oh. okay this is a difficult sign so if you ever walk up here in that direction then be careful here <laughs> so one two three we take the middle one <laughs> this is the one it's a bit hidden when you approach the sign it's that's I think that's why I did not see it I thought to myself when I came around here I really I thought to myself I remembered last time we went wrong so this time I came there and thought oh they fixed the sign it's very clear now <laughs> and I did exactly the same mistake again so yeah it's the sign now we're on the right path this is what you want to see Feldbergsteig <laughs> I cannot believe I did it wrong a second time so funny oh careful little break point here little rest stop and look what I found <laughs> yeah it's a cake cake in the in the can happy birthday it's my birthday it's my birthday hike here so I will consume this delicious cake now and you can watch me <laughs> Leave no trace, packed everything again, of course, cleaned everything. So it was nice, finished the whole cake. <laughs> yeah, that's allowed. Yeah. Whew. Okay, now the scenic part hike of the hike starts, and we will approach the summit from the other side of the mountain.
I will show you the scenic part. White life. <laughs> Yeah, now cows are no danger, they're harmless, but still big animals can be a bit unpredictable sometimes, you know. Sometimes they're interested in you, especially when you're sweating and they start licking you. They're interested in the salt eh, of your sweat and then they might approach you and start licking your arm or your leg. <laughs> like I said, they're harmless, harmless animals, but I would not say completely harmless, yeah. Like, you have to be careful when you have a dog with you because they uh, might get might start to attack the dog yeah because they think okay the dog maybe reminds them of a wild animal a wolf and they want to protect their calves or whatever so it's very common that uh, people who go hiking with a dog get attacked by cows happen all the time in the Alps many many times yeah so you have to be super careful but without an animal still I would say they are unpredictable I don't really trust them <laughs> so I just keep on moving I know I know I know if you're maybe from the countryside or you're you're, you're a farmer or you you're more familiar with cows you might laugh about me and say oh they're like you were scared of the cows. No, I was not scared of the cows. I just don't trust them. I'm, they are big animals. They are bigger than me. So if they, they can push me over, they can step on me. So I have respect of that. So and I don't, I'm not an expert. I don't know how to handle them. Yeah, I don't know how to push them away or whatever. Maybe the trick is just make noise or that, hey, go away. But it could be the opposite effect. Yeah? It could be that you scare them and then they get angry. So, I don't know, I'm just respectful with them, try to keep a distance, keep on moving. Yeah, it's not my expertise. Okay, let's continue enjoying the view. Okay, last thing about cows. <laughs> Seriously, look it up, there are many accidents with cows in the mountains. But it's not also that they might attack you because you're with a dog or whatever. It's also they fall on you. Google it. It happens that people get killed on mountain paths because a cow fell on them. <laughs> yeah. We have the, these uh, mountain cows. They are outside on these fields, yeah, in the mountains. Here it's not so steep. But if you're in the Alps, you can have a quite a steep grassy field. And if you then have a path and it goes, it follows a bit below some, some cows yeah, and the cows start panicking or moving fastly. It could be that they lose the grip yeah, or con control of their standing and then they, they might move down the mountain or fall. I would not say fall, but they, they are big you know, and they have maybe they cannot catch themselves that quickly. And if you're too close to them, they might fall on you. <laughs> people laugh about it. Oh, people get killed by cows, by falling cows. I know it's funny, but it's true. It happens. <laughs> okay, approaching the third hut on this hike.
Ah, interesting. Now that we have just talked about cows for, for some time and now we see this information sign there. It's an uh, information sign from the farmers, if I'm, if I'm correct. Let's see. Oh, BL, HV. I'll put down there where what, what BL, HV is. But basically it's an information sign telling you about the worries of the farmers. Yeah, Saying, okay, yeah, we, we worry about, uh, about our animals, leaving them out here. We worry that they get killed by wolves. Because, yeah, wolves are coming back to Germany more and more over the last years. So they worry and they say, okay, we, we, at the moment we don't know what to do because they, they, could, uh, they could put the cows inside at night or, or just don't put them outside anymore. But then it's not good for the cows. It's stressful for them. So it's not good for the animals. They could erect fences to protect them. Fences against the wolves would work. But the problem is then the hikers would not get through the fences anymore and, and also some areas are very steep and then the fences also don't work. So there is not the perfect solution at the moment. So that's basically what the sign says. It's just giving you information about that topic. Yeah, maybe you didn't know that there are wolves in Germany, but they are. I haven't seen one yet. Uh, I think they're still very, very rare. But they, yeah, they exist. There was always on the news or a wolf was seen near near kindergarten or things like that, you know. And then people people are worried. Uh, what we also get in uh, Germany in Bavaria uh, every year are brown bears. Yeah, not many. Let's say one one every season or two. Let's see that way. They like, they don't cause any problems so far. They are only we only just know that they are there because they get. They are they're wildlife cameras and they, they yeah, they, the camera just catches them how they walk around at, at night in the forest. So we know they are there. And yeah, usually it's young males. Uh, they are from the Italian population. They are, you know, they're brown bears in northern Italy in Trentino. And if it's a, the, the young uh, male brown bears, if I'm correct, usually are the ones who start walking around wandering and they, it's the instinct they want to uh, find a female uh, they want to mate and and want to go exploring yeah so far no no problems with them oh, okay let's no 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 problem is also not correct it happens with the last years there were always attacks like you know there were, there were like uh, some sheep were, were killed or not sure about cows but uh, i think some sheep got attacked somewhere uh, near Garmisch uh, but it's very rare in, in Germany Austria has more brown bears of course because Austria is between Italy and Germany so yeah something to have in mind when you go hiking yeah can always be animals birds. don't be scared I think those animals are more scared of us than we are of them Oh. And they really, they don't, don't want to have anything to do with us. Okay, it was super busy there. There was a queue at the entrance waiting for a table so ah, it's fine don't eat anything just had a whole birthday cake <laughs> okay this is the last climb now I think you can already see the the tower that is on the summit of Feldberg It's uh, yeah, just a tower for TV and mobile networks 
of course they have to put it on a high high elevation here for this area and second thing you have here is this thing is the weather weather radar station so it's just basically measuring the weather situation here Okay, as I already mentioned, felt back like the summer just more like in a flat open area. But if you're looking for the real summit, it's near the weather radar station there. It's just oh, what they measured is the highest point of this area here. Let's go there. So that was the summit of Feldberg. Very busy over there. So did not talk there or film much. Always people coming and going. We will now walk all the way to that tower over there, the second one. That's then from there, I think, or from somewhere on the left hand side, we can see the lake. Well, this is actually very funny. Look at this signpost at the bottom. See how high it is. <laughs> the signs are all over there. <laughs> the reason is there can be a lot of snow here on the mountain and yeah as I told you in the very beginning it's a uh, ski area uh, over there so also up here there will be people in winter and if the snow is two meters three meters high then uh, people still need to be able to navigate. <laughs> That's why the signs are so high. <laughs> it's just very funny. So this is the southern direction and there at the horizon you can see the Alps. Not so clear visible but you can see the at least the the yeah the edges this tower is uh, more of an observation deck there's a elevator inside you can get all the way to the top and there you can have a 360 degree view over the black forest and then you can take a staircase down if you want I'm not sure if it's open it doesn't look open anymore it is 5 p.m. now so actually it's a ham museum <laughs> at the top and it's open until from 9 until 4.30 so close now that's fine don't have to visit the ham museum <laughs> Now heading over to the cable car station and there you can see there's a monument on the left hand side and I think from there somewhere we have the view down to the Feldsee, to the lake Looks like the monument is being renovated There's a toilet here for the workers Oh, okay You can see there at the top Let's see if we can get there 
the, the top we'll try to zoom in there is a like a rope that holds the rocks together so I think some must have come down you can see over the oops, sorry the rocks here around it it's not they're not supposed to be there yeah so looks like they have to fix it with some cement so that's the lake where I've been this morning Yeah, once you reach this area again with the ski lifts uh, it becomes more busy again and obviously it's not so natural and so pretty anymore uh, but still it's a very very good hike a lot of nature this path through the through the jungle through the screen forest along the stream that was awesome <laughs> Now we are going on somewhere over there. Yeah. By the way, the Tower of the Ham Museum that was approximately 1440 meters. So I'd say it's 50 meters lower than the summit and the big tower. Uh, you have a good view from there. Still I recommend when you're already here that you just visit both places because the the view the direction the perspective is a little bit different so I would say do both also when you start to go down there from the monument the path immediately splits to the left and to the right uh, you can choose both both go down the thing with the left one is it yeah, just goes along the cable car this one now is the the correct one that's which the one is on the map and the one on the website the Feldbergsteig it immediately goes away from the cable car so you're already in forest again as you can see so it's a bit more pleasant to go down so always look for that red arrow right there yeah. that's what you have to follow <laughs> Okay, we're down. Okay, that's the end of today's hike. I hope you enjoyed me taking you along today in the Black Forest up to the Feldberg. I will probably film tomorrow too, so I haven't decided yet what mountain it will be. You will find out. See you. Okay, one last question. Uh, if you have watched my Silent Way videos, um, you remember that there I had this uh, motivational motto of I am speed. <laughs> I didn't use that today, so what's your opinion? Should I keep it for me? You know, as my, my, my thing, my motto, <laughs> my t-shirt slogan. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of liked it. Let me know in the comments below. I am speed. So in case you're complaining that I wasn't filming enough on the summit, here we are back at sunset at the summit. There's no one.
I don't know, race up here and I don't know for my accommodation. Took me uh, 45 minutes. Crazy. Now, oh, it is like nine now, 20 minutes after sunset. Not sure it's the best spot here to watch the sunset. But it's the only spot I have. So it's pretty unique. <laughs> but I still have to walk down another, I don't know, half an hour back in the twilight. Already getting dark. Okay, it was not the best sunset of the world, but felt pretty nice to uh, first have dinner, had dinner down there, and then decided, okay, let's go up again for sunset. So, it took me 40 minutes to the summit, and now I'm on the way down again. It's almost 10 pm. Yeah, pretty cool. I think it's blue hour now. It's the moon up there. I don't know if the cam camera can catch us. Yeah. Okay, I have to focus on the path now. It's getting a bit darker here. Ooh, pretty dark actually. Suddenly. But I think I'll just keep on talking with the camera. Need some company here. <laughs> it's not that I'm scared or something, but it always feels a bit creepy to walk through the dark forest. It feels better to talk with someone. So, talking with you now. <laughs> okay, it was just a short section of a bit darker. Now I'm in an open area again. <sighs> yeah, what a day. What a hike. <laughs> I don't know how many times I said goodbye already. Okay. To walk all the way down there where the lights are. All right, guys. Almost back at my accommodation. Oh, this is a wrap now. Oh, now I really say goodbye. <laughs> See you again to the next video. And thanks for coming with me today up to Feldberg the, on the, the hike today and then later up to the uh, sunset. Oh, cannot talk anymore. Super exhausted. <laughs> All right. I am speed and good night. <laughs>